Now the UK is rushing forward in this laser race with its new weapon, the Dragonfire. UK Dragonfire is an MOD and DSTL and UK industry programme to demonstrate the capability of a laser directed energy weapon system. Something which we can just fire using, using a laser weapon and have on our platforms is potentially going to be much cheaper. The beams of light that have been splitting the sky in science fiction movies for years are no longer just a figment of the imagination. After a long wait, laser weapons are entering the scene. After decades of technical challenges that began in the 1960s, high-powered lasers and advanced beam guidance systems have finally brought this technology to the battlefield. Now, one country is poised to take the lead in this race. That country is the United Kingdom. So are missiles on the shelf? There is no clear answer to this question, but perhaps it is time to say goodbye to missiles. Because the United Kingdom has made a dramatic leap forward in the field of directed energy weapons. The successful testing of the Dragonfire laser system was just the beginning. Now, the Royal Navy is preparing to integrate laser systems on four warships as a powerful and precise drone defence weapon. This development shows once again that the future of warfare technology is not far away. But what do we know about laser weapons? Will these systems become the new rulers of the seas? For answers to these questions and more, here is our video. But first, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications and give us a like to stay up to date with our content. The UK will deploy new Dragonfire laser weapons on four warships as part of plans to strengthen its military. The Royal Navy aims to equip four destroyers with the advanced weapon system by 2027. This comes as part of a $2.8 billion increase in the UK's defence spending over the next fiscal year, as the country increases its defence budget to 2.5% of GDP in the face of growing global instability and pressure from Donald Trump. We will deliver our commitment to spend 2.5% of GDP on defence, but we will bring it forward so that we reach that level in 2027. That means spending £13.4 billion more on defence every year from 2027. In its spring statement, the British government announced plans to spend around 10% of the Ministry of Defence Equipment budget on new technologies. These include AI-powered weapons and drones. A budget of $516 million will also be set aside for a defence innovation fund. As announced in the spring statement, the additional funding for defence will be directed towards advancing technology, including securing the launch date for Dragonfire. The team developing the laser weapon is led by pan-European missile manufacturer MBDA, a joint venture between Airbus, BAE Systems and Leonardo. The $100 million Dragonfire project was first announced in 2017. The UK government initially expected the system to be ready by 2032. This date was postponed to 2027. In January 2024, the Dragonfire system destroyed an air target for the first time using a high-powered test shot. Dragonfire utilizes UK technology to deliver a high-powered laser at long ranges. Mounted on a turret, the system combines an electro-optical camera and secondary low-power laser for precise target acquisition and tracking achieving an accuracy equivalent to hitting a $1 coin from a kilometre away. Although its range remains classified, Dragonfire is a line-of-sight weapon capable of hitting any visible target. Laser-guided energy weapons can hit targets at the speed of light and use an intense beam of light to interrupt the target. This can lead to structural damage or more effective results when the warhead is targeted. Firing for 10 seconds is the cost equivalent of using a normal heater for just one hour. It therefore has the potential to be a long-term, low-cost alternative to certain tasks that missiles currently perform. The cost of operating the laser is typically less than 10 dun per shot. While laser weapons hold great promise, there are challenges. Fog, rain and other atmospheric conditions can affect the effectiveness of laser beams. High-power laser systems require significant amounts of energy to operate, creating logistical challenges for mobile deployments. Maintaining a focused beam over long distances can be difficult, limiting the effective range of the weapon. Nevertheless, 
This milestone has demonstrated the ability to engage air targets at relevant ranges and is an important step in bringing this technology into service. Both the Army and the Royal Navy are considering using this technology as part of future air defence capabilities. The announcements once again highlighted the importance of this next generation weapon technology. Maria Eagle, the UK's Minister for Defence Procurement, emphasised that the introduction of laser technology to the Royal Navy nearly five years ahead of schedule demonstrates the country's commitment to defence. This technology will enable us to learn by doing while protecting our armed forces. This will make us more agile and prepared, she said, making a statement after the successful test firing of the Dragonfire system last year. Then Defence Minister Grant Shapps stated that laser technology could revolutionise the battlefield. Shapps emphasised that such advanced weapons not only reduce reliance on expensive munitions, but also significantly reduce the risk of unintended collateral damage. The Chief Executive Officer of the Defence Science and Technology Laboratory said the trials were a critical step in understanding the potential of directed energy weapons, as well as the threats they could pose. He underlined that DSTL's years of knowledge, skills and operational experience play a decisive role in preparing the armed forces for the future. On the other hand, the Director of Strategic Programs at the Ministry of Defence said that the Dragonfire trials in the Hebrides region of Scotland are a demonstration of the UK's world-leading technology capability. According to the Director, the system is capable of tracking and neutralising targets at range with high precision, giving warfighters superior capabilities in a world of evolving threats. The director said that, now it's time to move to the next stage. Moreover, the UK is not alone in this laser race. In the US, laser weapon development is in full swing, with defence agencies investing heavily in all military branches. Multiple systems are already operational or in advanced stages of testing. Power levels are increasing rapidly and strategic deployment is expanding. The mission spans land and sea platforms, and operational objectives focus on eliminating drones and incoming missiles and disabling enemy sensors. Directed energy weapons are now playing an increasingly tactical role, thanks to their low cost per engagement compared to traditional interceptors. Laser shots cost significantly less than guided missiles. The US Department of Defense supports 31 laser-based initiatives with an annual budget of $1 billion. While China's approach to laser weapons remains deliberately opaque, emerging evidence paints a picture of rapid development and growing ambition. Since 2006, there have been reports that Chinese forces may have targeted satellites using ground-based lasers. This indicates an early Chinese interest in neutralizing orbiting assets. This initial focus has since spread to many other areas, and operational testing of advanced systems is now taking place in the public eye. The Silent Hunter, an onboard directed energy system, is China's most visible laser weapon. Capable of disabling unmanned aerial vehicles and light armored vehicles, it reflects a shift towards tactical utility in active combat zones. Recent images of the Silent Hunter on Type 071 amphibious ships show that the naval applications of this system are expanding, increasing its mobility and deployment flexibility. China's military industrial sector continues to invest heavily in directed energy, aiming to develop systems capable of interfering with satellite sensors and even disabling the guidance of enemy missiles in flight. Western analysts believe that Beijing's interest in orbital dominance is not merely theoretical, with programs in place to operationalize such tools in future space conflict scenarios. Despite these limitations, China has demonstrated its intention to enter global competition in the field of directed energy weapons. The start of the deployment of operational systems shows that lasers are vital for modern warfare and have targets that extend far beyond their borders. Israel continues to lead in the development of battlefield-ready laser weapons. Iron Beam represents a significant leap forward in short-range air defence. Developed in a joint effort between Rafael Advanced Defence Systems and Elbit Systems, Iron Beam delivers a high energy output of 100 kilowatts 
and is specifically designed to intercept rockets, mortars and drones. Its purpose is to serve as a cost-effective, high-volume complement to existing air defence systems. Iron Beam is designed to work in direct coordination with the Iron Dome system, which relies on Tamir interceptor missiles costing around $40,000 each, although they are highly effective. Iron Beam significantly reduces this cost, offering virtually zero cost per shot. Field tests have demonstrated high levels of accuracy and reliability. Integration into the Israel Defense Forces is expected to take place soon, and fast response times make the system ideal for intercepting threats in urban areas and during high-volume attacks. Iron Beam is particularly suitable for the defense of sensitive infrastructures and civilian areas near conflict borders. Technical obstacles remain, such as energy demands and weather-related interference. Engineers continue to develop the platform to ensure reliability in real-time conflict. Despite these challenges, Iron Beam represents one of the most advanced, scalable laser defense solutions currently approaching deployment. Germany has focused its directed energy efforts on naval applications, focusing on ship-based laser weapons capable of defending against air threats. Rheinmetall and MBDA are leading the development of a high-energy laser system, with integration and testing taking place on the Saxon F-124 frigate. More than 100 field trials have been conducted under varying operational conditions, showing both stability and promise. The laser weapon demonstrator serves as the main system under development, designed to target unmanned aerial vehicles and intercept incoming missiles before they strike. By positioning the platform at sea, engineers are taking advantage of more space and onboard power. This helps overcome the energy demands that often limit land-based systems. Marine platforms allow for longer operating times without requiring frequent refueling or battery replacement. System readiness is expected in the next five to six years. Ongoing improvements are aimed at improving performance in challenging maritime environments, including harsh weather and low visibility. Commanders see directed energy weapons as valuable because of their unlimited stores that allow for continuous defense as long as the energy supply lasts. Replacing or supplementing missile-based systems with laser fire offers both logistical and financial benefits. India's pursuit of directed energy weapons has gained momentum through intensive efforts led by the Defense Research and Development Organization. The Durga 2 program represents the country's most ambitious attempt to field a high-energy laser system with multi-domain capability. The Center for Energy Systems and Sciences and the Laser Science and Technology Center are spearheading the project to produce a 100 Kladzukon class laser capable of neutralizing threats on land, air and sea. India's first step into operational testing took place in 2017 with a one key bow of prototype that successfully targeted metal plates at close range. This demonstration, although basic, served as a proof of concept for further development. Defence officials see laser weapons as critical for dealing with asymmetric threats, especially in contested regions involving rivals such as China and Pakistan. India's geopolitical environment continues to influence the urgency and scope of directed energy investments. Significant technical challenges are still being examined. Russia is taking a dual-track approach to its laser weapon strategy, targeting both space-based and battlefield threats. One of the most notable systems, Perisvet, entered service in 2018. It is widely believed to be designed specifically to neutralize reconnaissance and communication satellites. According to reports, the missile can attack targets between 200 and 1,900 kilometers above the Earth and focuses on interference rather than destruction. In recent years, Russia has expanded into ground-based tactical applications with the deployment of the Zadira. Used during the Ukraine conflict, Zadira was reportedly successful in neutralizing small unmanned aerial vehicles. Russian officials promoted the system as a fast-acting, low-cost alternative to missile-based defense in drone-dense environments. The operational focus includes both symbolic and strategic value. Russian analysts often describe laser weapons as tools used to project technological prowess while disrupting enemy surveillance capabilities. 
Military doctrine shows intense interest in integrating laser systems with radar and existing missile platforms. Challenges remain. Reliable power supplies are a major obstacle, especially in mobile deployments. Environmental factors, such as cloud cover and atmospheric conditions, also affect performance. Amid regional tensions and escalating drone wars, Japan and South Korea continue to strengthen their positions in the global push for directed energy weapons. Both countries are increasing their efforts through military investments and accelerated technological development, aiming to deploy practical systems that address real-world defense needs. Japan unveiled a 10 kilobyte laser weapon mounted on an electronic warfare vehicle at the 2024 Defense Exhibition. The Ministry of Defense has identified funding avenues to support future variants for aircraft and naval platforms. South Korea made headlines with its Block Y anti-aircraft laser system. Costing as little as $1.50 per shot, the system offers a tactical advantage for urban and border defense. Its efficiency, low visibility and fast response times make it suitable for neutralizing air threats without attracting unwanted attention. Military research and development budgets in both countries have expanded to reflect the urgency driven by external threats and arms competition in the region. Defence industry companies in Tokyo and Seoul are putting joint programmes and prototypes through rapid test cycles. Turkey has further advanced its directed energy capabilities with the NASA system, first publicly announced in 2012. Developed by Tubitak and Aselsan, NASA focuses on disrupting optical and electro-optical sensors rather than incinerating targets. This approach enables it to interfere with guided missiles and reconnaissance systems without requiring destructive power levels. Installed primarily on naval platforms, NASA strengthens Turkey's maritime defences by providing protection against surveillance and targeting systems. It has been displayed at numerous defence exhibitions internationally reflecting the country's interest in exporting advanced military technologies. Officials emphasised that NASA operates in the field of electronic warfare, capable of intercepting and confusing incoming threats using high-precision light energy. Unlike more destructive systems, NASA aims for long-term operational use in surveillance interception and missile defence through non-lethal means. Development continues with upgrades to increase power output and expand deployment to land-based vehicles. As Turkey expands its drone programs and maritime reach, the integration of directed energy with the broader defence ecosystem becomes increasingly valuable. NASA highlights Turkey's intention to become a self-sufficient defence innovator in laser technology. While not yet a frontline weapon, NASA's evolution shows strong potential for expanded capabilities and deployment in various combat scenarios. In short, laser weapons are no longer projections of the future, but operational tools that are reshaping modern warfare. Precision, cost-effectiveness and lightning-fast interaction make them attractive additions to military arsenals. Nations are not replacing traditional weapons, but they are developing hybrid strategies to address 21st century threats. Ongoing investment and testing will determine how well-directed energy technology is integrated into combat operations. By 2025, real systems will be in the field and the global race will accelerate. Thank you for watching.